By the end of this video, you will have designed your own bespoke center finder, or you could use the technical drawing down in the description. What's up? I'm Jonathan, and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is all about doing some precision modeling within Blender to create your own center finder. By the way, just before we jump in, I would also love to hear from you to see what you would like me to design next with precision modeling within Blender. Now let's get straight into it. Starting from a fresh Blender file, we're gonna go ahead and create a center finder because that's what I'm needing for a current project. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different. This is still precision and action, but the technical drawing doesn't have all the details for us because put frankly, I just don't know how to create that technical drawing. And on top of that, I'm starting to just give it a little bit of an artistic twist to all of this. Like you don't need half the stuff that I'm gonna be doing to this model here to make this a functional tool. So if you're looking for pure engineering grade precision, your best bet is probably not Blender in the first place. Go take a look at Onshape, Fusion 360, things like that, but just be aware that their free licenses doesn't let you sell the file itself. However, with Blender, if you're able to get away with precision in here, you're able to actually sell the object itself. So let's go ahead, let's select everything, delete it, and bring in a plane. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing here, or you're wanting to learn this, there's a course down in the description, and there is also all the add-ons with the link down below in the description as well. So I'm first going at 175, and then I'm changing my X to 25, yeah. 25. Now I've gone ahead and screwed up the scale here. So we've got to make sure we apply that scale now. And then from here, I'm going to take this into edit mode. I'm going to go ahead and give this two loop cuts. Great. And then I'm going to go ahead into edge selection, select one edge of this. And then from here, I'm going to go GG to slide this edge all the way to one side, then go GY 15. And that now puts that where I want it to be. So I'm going to do the same for this one. GG, go all the way there. GY minus 15 this time. Great. And that's sort of the fundamental shape to get started with. So with that done, let's go ahead, select everything, extrude this up by five millimeters. Then I'm going to grab the two faces here and extrude that up by 25 millimeters. Now I want to just sort of do a bevel on these here, but at the same time, I want to be able to extrude this later on. So let's see what's going to happen. So I find that depending when you start to add bevels, things can sort of get weird, but let's go ahead. Let's add a bevel here. So it doesn't matter with that. Let's put in our overlap. This is basically going to be 12.5, but that doesn't really matter. You can just crank that all the way up. Let's go with segments. Let's give it a good high amount, like 75. I want that to be a very smooth round thing. But if you see what's just happened here, we have this little problem going on right there. So before we go ahead and apply that, let's undo this. And let's just go ahead, going around, selecting these things right here. And let's also select the edges down here. And let's do an X dissolve edges. Fantastic. With those edges now dissolved, now we can go ahead and do this bevel. And this is one of the things that just comes from organic modeling. And you'll see that now it works perfectly fine. So with that done, I'm wanting to be able to extrude this face out. But if I try and do that right this minute, things are going to go a little bit weird because I want to be able to bevel this as well. So what I need to do is I want to select the vertices right here and also over on this side here. So selecting those there and this one over here. Now I wanna have my merge on, but not only just my merge, I also want to turn on my split edge faces because now when I do an extrude and I do this down on the Z, you're gonna see that it's gone ahead and split that face. I can now go ahead and delete the extra vertices there, go face selection, select these faces right here, then I can go ahead and extrude this along the normals by five millimeters. Yeah, then I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna select everything, I'm gonna go merge by distance because I know I have some overlapping vertices and then I'm also gonna do an X, a limited dissolve and set this to 0 0.1. Okay, with that now done, I'm gonna start beautifying this a little bit more. So let's go ahead, select these edges here. I'm gonna select these edges right here do a B and just crank that all the way up. And then on top of that, I wanna grab these edges right here 
and I want to go ahead and bevel them too. Now I'm not wanting a bevel, what I'm wanting here is a chamfer, so I'm going to set this segment to 1, I'm going to set this also to 2.5, and on top of that I want to grab this, go GG, and move that all the way along. Now you might be thinking, well we're creating some overlapping vertices here. No, remember we have our auto merge on, so right this minute they're all merging up automatically, so be careful with that. So selecting that, GG, and dragging that along that way. Okay, great, so with that going on, let's select everything, merge by distance, just double check that we're sorting all that out, great. And then from here, let's start to add the pencil hole as well as some finger holes. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's bring in a cylinder, I'm gonna make the depth of this pretty big, make the radius of this, oops, if you hide, if this happens to you and it gets hidden away, hit F9, I'll come back. Let's go radius of two, I also like to have a decent amount of resolution for this. So with that, like that, that's looking good. I'm pretty happy with that, I don't need this to be in any other way, so I'm just gonna go ahead and straight away commit that cut. So with that now in place, let's go ahead and bring in another cylinder, and this one's going to be a radius of 10, and I'm also gonna go ahead and times this by two, have plenty of resolution, and this is basically where I'm gonna be using, sort of using this as a cutting object to create some finger profiles for me to be able to twist this easier. So I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate it, then I'm gonna go G, Y, 40, grab this other one, go G, Y, minus 40, great. Now I have my 3D cursor already in the middle there, so I'm gonna assign these over with the origin point there, and the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can go in the top view, hit rotate, and then just rotate this to where I want it to be. See, I'm not exactly being precise here. Now if I did wanna be precise, the way to go about it is a little bit convoluted. Let's see if we can do it. I'm not gonna guarantee, because I know that this type of thing can go a little bit weird with CAD transforms, but let's do it. So we're gonna select all of this, go into edge selection, I'm gonna go into the top view, I'm gonna turn on CAD transforms, I'm gonna hit R for my rotation, gonna space to cancel everything out, go O for origin point, so I'm gonna do it from here, then I'm gonna hit Shift Z so I don't move on the Z, and then I'm gonna pick a vertex that I like the look of here, so I'm gonna hit space and V, so let's go for, let's say, this vertex there. Now I wanna snap that vertex to that edge, so I'll hit E, and you'll see, there we go, we've basically snapped that vertex right there. Now there is this weird thing that's happening right this minute that I'm not too happy about. That should not be happening like that. So just be aware things are going wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and send a little message over to Steven of CAD Transforms and point this out to him, but there we go, that sort of, as close as we're gonna get right this minute for precision of that. So with that in place, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna commit a cut to this so it's nice and pretty like that. And the last thing that I wanna to do to this is sort of give it a little bit of a bevel on these corners here. So I'm gonna take this back into edit mode, go edge selection, I'm gonna select these edges right on here, yep. I don't really know how I want this to look, but let's give this a nice little bevel. I think just that, or should I actually give it some segments? Probably give it some segments. I think that looks a little bit better. And you know what, if I turn off the overlap, you can really go crazy with this. You can make this go into the structure like so. And you know what, that's what I think I'm gonna do. Just go a little bit in, or am I going to just go with making this a chamfer that goes in. As you can see, this is the fun bit of Blender where you can really start to just make these mistakes or make this sort of organic looking thing. So I could decide to go ahead and go with something like this, and this here could be it. But you know what? I think that will be a little bit tricky. It might catch on the wood there, and that's not quite what I'm wanting here. I need this to be practical. So let's go ahead, let's go with the clamp overlap, let's give this a decent amount of segments, I'll go with 35, 50, let's go with 50, go the maximum I can and I'll be happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead, select everything, go merge again by distance and clean that up. Now lastly, on this side, I want to go ahead 
around here, I need to make sure that this is being filleted out. So I'm going to go in and we can see that we have this edge going like that. This is going to give us a little bit of a problem, which we'll see right this minute. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to select this edge loop right there. And now while I select this edge loop, I'm going to go ahead and bevel it. And you will see that if I give this a chamfer instead, oh no, it hasn't given us a problem because these are not too bad. So that's working pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and I think the maximum we can go here is sort of a four. Is it a four? No, it's a three really. Um, because if I go back from there, space. Oh, it's giving me a 2.5, which makes sense. Let's go with a 2.5. And I think that's going to be a decent amount because remember that that down there is not that much. But however, if that's not what I wanted, I could just turn off the overclamp here and I can go even further out. And you know what? I think I am going to go a little bit further out. I'm going to go and set this to three. So that would be two millimeters down there. I think that sounds like a pretty reasonable size. I don't want to go too little because if not, that will just deform with time as I use it. And then from there, as we always should, let's go ahead and select everything. Once again, merge by distance, make that look good. And let's give this a look with the 3D print tool. Everything's looking pretty good. We've got some non-flat faces. Let's just give that a little quick check see where those are coming out. Oh, it's just right at these extremes. Of course, it's going to say there's no flat faces there. Don't worry about it. That's just because basically we've got a cut going across here and it's looking for an edge loop. So this isn't a quad. So no need to worry about that at all. So let's go ahead. I'm going to select this. We can go here to the export here, or I like to do it the old school way. I'm going to go export STL and I'm going to go see you over at Prusa Slicer. Here we are now in Prusa Slicer and it looks like it's come out absolutely beautifully. There is no warning signs or anything about this. So let's go ahead. Let's slice this up. See how long this is going to take. Not too long, about two hours. That's going to come out perfectly fine here. So let's go ahead, let's get this 3D printed out and let's see it in action. And there you have it, the print came out great, the functionality is perfect, and now I can go ahead and do my own little project with it. A huge thank you to my patrons, you guys are absolutely awesome, and it really does mean the world to me to have your support. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here, and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we do have a Discord channel, and that is down in the description. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.